Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the leak out question sum of root to leave binary numbers. Alright, so in this question we're given a binary tree. Each node has a value of either 0 or 1. Each root to leave path represents a binary number starting with the most significant bit. So for example, the path 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 uh, represents 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 in binary, which is, well, 13. And if you don't know how that conversion happens, I'll show you how that works. Okay, so for all leaves in the tree, consider the number represented by the path from the root to that leaf. And we return the sum of these numbers. Okay, so for example, we're given this binary tree over here, and we have uh, four paths. So 1, 0, 0 is one path. And we're going to consider 1, 0, 0 as a binary number. Then we're going to have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So those are going to be our four paths. They're all going to be in binary. We're going to convert that to decimal values. And then we're going to add them all up, which in this case outputs a value of 22. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to see how can we get that value in this case of 22? And what are the steps we need to take in order to solve this question? All right, so uh, I'll have the same. So I have the same tree over here. So this is the exact same tree as our question. And these are the four paths. So we have 100, and 100 actually represents the number 4. Then 101, 110, 111, and these are all of its uh, decimal equivalents. Okay, so let's see how can we actually convert a binary value to a decimal value or integer value. So in this case, we have the number 100. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the rightmost. So for the rightmost, it's going to have a value of 2 to the power of 0 multiplied by whatever this is. So over here, it's 0. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 0 multiplied by whatever uh, value it is, either a 1 or a 0. So we have that, and each time we're going to increase the power for the 2 by 1. So right now, in the beginning, it's 2 to the power of 0. Then it's going to be 2 to the power of 1. And we're going to add that. So we're going to multiply that with this value again, which is 0. So now we have that. Now we add it again. And now we increase from 1 to 2. So now we're going to have 2 to the power of 2. And it's going to be multiplied by this value over here, which in this case is actually 1. So how does this actually work out? So 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 1 multiplied by 0 is, well, 0. Over here, we have 2 multiplied by 0, which is 0. And finally, over here, we have 2 to the power of 2, which is 4, multiplied by 1, which is 4. So this is how you get the value of 4. And there's actually, so using the same idea, uh, we can kind of do this. So it's the same idea. It's just represented kind of differently. And using this representation is going to help us to solve this question. So what exactly is this representation? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a running count of our sum. So in the at the very beginning, our so I'll represent the sum in the color red. So we have a sum of the value 0. So here it starts off at 0. So what we're going to do each time, we're going to multiply this value by 2. So we're going to do 2 multiplied by 0. And we're going to add it by whatever the root or whatever node we are on. So in this case, we start off at our root. So over here, we're going to do 2 multiplied by our sum. So 2 into 0 plus the value of our root. So in this case, that's 1. So now our value is going to change from 0 to 2 into 0 plus 1, which is 2 into 0 is 0 plus 1, 1. So now our sum has a value of 1. So now, uh, just for the sake of this question, I'm just going to move to the left. So now let's go to the left. And right now, our node is at the number 0. So we're going to do the same steps. So we're going to do 2 multiplied by our sum. So 2 into 1 is 2. And now we're going to add whatever uh, our binary number is. So 0 or 1. So in this case, it's 0. So 2 into 1, 2 plus 0. So our sum is now 2. So same way, now let's go to the left again. And over here, it's going to be 2 into 2, 4 plus 0. So over here, we get a value of 4. So this is going to, this, what that means is when we take this entire path, we end up with a sum of 4. So 1, 0, 0 is nothing else but the value 4. So I'll just kind of write this down over here. So similarly, what we can do, instead of starting from the beginning, from our root over here, we can just start off from here. So we have 1, we have 2, and we can just continue off from 2. So instead of going all the way here, we can go here, which saves time. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to do 2 into 2, which is 4. But instead of 0, it's actually 1. So 4 plus 1 
is well 5. So the value of this path of 101 is 5, as you can see over there. So we have 5. And same way, so we got everything for the left part. Now let's go over here. So same step, so 1, so 2 into 1, 2, uh, plus 1, which is 3. And then over here for the left part, so 3 into 2, 6, plus 0 is 6. So this ends up with the value of 6, so 110 is equal to 6, as you can see here. And finally, this is going to be 7. So as you can see, doing this, we actually found out all of our sums. And the final answer is just going to be taking these four values and adding them up. So 4 plus 5, 9, and 6 plus 7, which is 13. When you add them up, you get 22, right? So And that's the value that we're looking for. So how can we actually use this in our code? So what we're going to do is we're going to find this concurrent sum for everything at the leftmost root until we actually end up reaching a leaf. So we find it over here. So we get one, then we get two, and then we get four and four. So once we reach that value, we get to a leaf. So we're done. So that is going to be one of our values. And in that case, we're going to move up one time. So we're going to start off. This is going to be our root and we're going to check if it has a right child. And if it does have a right child, we're going to go to its right child and we're going to perform the same steps. But in this case, so the right child is a leaf. So in that case, we continue the sum value here, which has a value of two. We continue with that value and perform the same steps until we reach a leaf. And in this case, this value is a leaf. So that's how we end up with five. So in this case right now, we've got everything onto the left of the root, which is one. So now we're going to end up to the right starting off with this value. Then we're going to go to this node over here, giving us a value of three. So over here, we're going to go to the left and we're going to go until we reach a leaf. And over here, we found a leaf. And in that case, we're just going to stop. We're going to uh, perform the calculations and then we're going to stop since we've reached a leaf. And once we reach a leaf, we're going to go one up. So from here, we go back up here. So now we're back at this one over here. And once we do that, since we already checked the left, we're now going to check the right and do the same steps until we reach a leaf. And in this case, that's with the value of one. And we find its value, which over here is the value of seven. So we're going to end up at the ending of this recursive call. We're going to end up with four and five and six and seven. So first we add four and five, then we add six and seven, and then we're going to add them both together, giving us our desired answer, which is 22. So if this is a little bit confusing, I tried to explain the recursion. If not, I think it should be a little bit easier when we get. So in our function, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling it recursively. And each time we call it, we're actually going to give it our current uh, running sum. So what do I mean by that? So uh, right now, so if we were at this value, we're going to give it the current sum, which is the value two. And if we were over here, we're going to give it four and so on and so forth. So so in order to do that, we actually need to have another argument. So I'm just going to modify this function over here and I'm going to give it that argument. So I'll just call this sum underscore and we're just going to give it a value of zero in the very beginning. OK, and if you don't know what this means uh, by giving it a value of zero, so what that means is if you don't specify a value to it, and in that case, it's just going to start off with uh, whatever value give it. So in this case, we're starting off with the value of zero unless we mention otherwise. So over here, we're going to have our base case. So if not root and if it doesn't exist, and in that case, we're just going to return a value of zero. OK, so over here, each time we're going to change our sum variable. So this variable over here, so let's call it sum underscore. And what is it that we did to it? So what we did is, I'll just go to sum underscore, we multiplied this value by two, so multiply by two, and then we added it with whatever the value of the current node we are on is. So to do that, we're gonna do sum underscore multiply by two, and we're gonna add it with root dot val. So this is the same steps that we did earlier to uh, keep changing our concurrent sum. Okay, so over here, we're going to check if this, uh, whatever node we are on has any children. So it could be a right child or a left child. So for this, we're going to check. So if, uh, sorry, if root dot left, so we're checking if it has a left root or if it has a right root. So if root dot right, if either of these are true, we're going to end up going inside of this if loop over here. 
So inside of this if loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables uh, just for now and I'll change that up later. Okay, so it's going to be x and y. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, we're going to call this function on itself for the left node. So over here, we're going to do self dot. I'll just copy this over here. Some root to left. We're calling this function on itself. And what are, what is the root going to be? So the root is going to be the left node. And uh, we're going to give it our current sum. So in this case, it's going to be sum underscore. That's what our current sum is at. And uh, so this is going to be a value for x. And then over here, we're going to do the same thing all this year. And instead of calling it on the left root, we're going to call this on the right root. So over here, we're going to do root dot right. And if this is a little bit confusing, I'll just show you what this looks like. So I'll just print it out to show you what's actually happening. And at the ending of this, we're actually going to end up returning the value of x plus y. So that is going to be our answer. So over here, now we actually have two more cases that we need to account for. So one of the cases is, so let's say we only had a left root and we did not have a right root. Then in that case, what's going to happen is we're just going to end up returning zero. So we already took care of that. And the other case is, what if we are at a leaf? So I'll just do that over here, else. So when we do not have a left root or a right root, that means that we are at a leaf. So when we're at the leaf, as you can see, as you can see over here, all we did is we just returned this value of four. And that's all we're going to be doing over here. We're just going to return whatever the current sum is at. So once we reach a leaf, we're going to end up returning that sum. So what I'm going to do is let's run this code once. And I'm going to be running it on our same input as the example. And as you can see, this is what we end up with. So the first time, the, this is the x value on the left, and the right is the y value. So first we get 4, 5. So how does that make sense? So first we get 4 over here, and then we get 5 over here. Okay, so that's what we get for the first time. Then afterwards, we get 6 and 7. So as you can see, we get 6 and 7. And then the last time, we get 9 and 13. And for the very end, and for the very ending, all we did is we added nine and thirteen, and in that case, we just ended up returning that value of nine plus thirteen. So I just assigned it to variables to kind of make it easy for you to understand, and we can just save that space up by calling this uh, at the same time. So instead of putting them inside of variables, let's just do this plus this over here, and let's just return it directly. So it's the same thing, and yeah. So hopefully this does make uh, sense, using, so I tried my best to explain it. And do let me know if you have any sort of questions, and let's just submit this. Okay, I don't know why I got an error. I'm just going to submit it again, and hopefully it works now. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, our submission did get accepted. I'm not too sure why we got that error. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you.